Hi guys, today we will talk about just structures. Structures are very important, especially in the opening, and it shapes the game. You know, the, any structure may shape the game. And uh, we all know about the King Safety Development uh, Center, and all these things are somehow attached to the understanding of the structure. For an example, in the issue of pawn structures, I have chosen especially the game, my game against uh, Sredojevic, which is played all, almost a month ago, maybe didn't attract many people's attentions. And uh, it was purely based on choices for the structures. So the very first moves are e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. And then comes this move which was judged upon the history of chess as a bad structure. So how this opening named? First, people were calling it Laskar's Jagd in German, which meant like uh, Laskar's hunt. So what was Laskar hunting? He was hunting for Schlechter's scalp. And Schlechter in this position didn't call for the most natural move, knight db5. He has chosen a shy move with knight b3. Now, as you may see, black is a perfectly fine game, may even take over the initiative. So that's why it was called the Laskar's hunt, because he was hunting for the advantage and hunting for Schlechter's mistake. Although the game ended up as a draw, Schlechter was very tough. So the other move after e5, uh, which comes into mind, is knight f5. In some way, also aiming for d6 square. But here there is a big discrepancy that uh, when black moves d5, after the exchanges, although the pawn structure is broken, it's very dynamic. Also e5 occupies a place in the center. So, which leaves us with the only normal move, knight db5. And obviously d6. There are other ways of playing this kind of e5 push, but I think this is principle. Now, let's see. I mean, let's take a second glance in this position, you know. So what should white do? White should occupy in some way the d5 square. But uh, the first floors of people with knight d5 didn't fully work out, because you see that... Uh, not only d5, but also d6 becomes weak after the e5 push. But in some way, you don't want to occupy d5 with a pawn. You rather want to occupy it with a piece. So that's why bishop g5 became the number one move in this position. And also interesting, history-wise speaking, when this position has been reached back, back in time, and uh, this was the main scenery for the game Tarash Janowski from 1898 uh, from Vienna. Uh, Tarash urged to take all f6 immediately. And after f5, very active play as usual by the doctor. He even won the game. It's a long game. People remember the ending where uh, Janowski didn't play well, you know. But uh, very active play by White. Uh, perfectly uh, suiting into Tarish's style. Then comes uh, the second problem about the structure and the opening. Uh, people tried to take already the advantage of broken kingside pawn structure. And immediately this brings into mind, uh, if we change the openings, and for instance in this position, if black plays queen c7, or immediate e6, uh, then comes into mind knight b5, which Fischer was touching in his youth especially, even used it against Petrosian. He was ready to play positions with a tempo down. This bishop e3, down to bishop g5, obvious tempo loss for 
white provoked black to play a very interesting move d5. This is from where the second uh, name of the opening comes, the pelican. It's not the name of the bird, neither the animal, yeah? So, this kind of pawn sacrifice was already known in similar positions and named after the, well, not so much famous maybe, but uh, important chess player from Czechoslovakia immigrated to Argentina uh, during the Second World War, at the beginning of Second World War, playing uh, Buenos Aires Olympiad. And Petrosian had equal chances, at least in this position, as we know. But here, uh, we cannot uh, fully call it, uh, instead of b5, if I would do d5, knight takes d5 comes into fray. So this is a... Uh, it's not a good version, although Velimirovich tried against Saxe uh, in 1979, I assume. But uh, if you want to go for the broken king side, uh, white has to do this. But here, in some way, you know, Tarash who emphasized the dynamic pawn structures, black is able to play such positions with f5. Are there dangers? Yes, there are dangers in such structures. For instance, uh, Usually they do very sophisticatedly what uh, Tarash has done by this way. What is the, you know, sophisticated part of it? Uh, okay, if I would have taken in this way, for instance, that's a better place for the bishop. By playing the other move order, I lured the bishop into d7. So in some way I forced bishop d7 in this position. Okay, some serious theory evolves around it and uh, one more deficiency for the lines for white and for black you know this uh, drawing tendency especially by the other sacrifice on b5 and the move rook a4 is something you should be concerned. So when the world was really crazy for this variation in my childhood, in my youth, you know, in 1970s. These things start to be discovered. And like many people around that time, I was playing it uh, due to the efforts of uh, players from Chelyabinsk, after which, after the city, probably the uh, variation should be named. And some people only pick, them, uh, pick one among them and name it after Sveshnikov who also started to play these days e5 in this position and now the line is named by my good friend John van, John van der Weel, you know, who was a uh, former European uh, junior champion so we, he said like if that one is Sveshnikov this one should be called Kalashnikov here I can point out that the extra option for white to push c4 is it good? Uh, sorry. Is, uh, is it bad? We don't know. But, uh, because also, as one can see, White has to be concerned about his d4 square. Otherwise, uh, a transposition may even come from here. Probably this is a good transposition. So, back to our game. Sredojevic played b5, sorry, Sredojevic played uh, after b5, knight d5, he didn't choose that, and he wanted to anchor his knight on d5. Now you see that uh, white has a positional advantage, he's not looking so much for tactics, but he occupied d5 square and guaranteed, at least temporarily, the occupation of the square by a piece, not by the pawn, which would cover the weakness of the square. So if some moment uh, the knight uh, is exchanged or is, not, is pulled, you know, to some other square, black may have problems with the pawn on d6. And he has chosen the classical line, which he did, uh, c3, which is also part of uh, my childhood. In my childhood, uh, you know, the c4, b4, knight c2 type of positions uh, were not very welcomed. Once again, probably it weakens also d4 square for white. So 
d4 and d5 respectively for black and white you know uh, weakened uh, it also gives black some game so we cannot really say that black is helpless in such positions there are many uh, important games many important ideas even to sacrifice the b4 pawn but we won't touch it you know because uh, in some way uh, since white also weakened the square uh, it's not a torture for black anymore And I played the move of my childhood. Many people in this position these days, they castle and they allow a4. And black has some luxury of pushing a5 in this position. But you can see this 6 e5 is isolated and uh, okay, these positions are really very sharp because of uh, two bishops. So we may see that uh, in this kind of opening, in some way, you got one weakness. If it is a real weakness, the structure, the pawn structure. On the other hand, king's safety, equal play in the center, there are some advantages. So back in my childhood, everybody was playing like this. But what happened? Why I myself didn't touch the opening almost for 30 years? Now I will explain you, we'll come in a particular position in the game when Sredevich has pushed a4. He has chosen it over Karpov's slow approach. These days Navarre had also some games like this. I mean white has some minimal edge in my opinion. But black is very active. And first of all a4 is really interesting. It shows that white can still push the pawn there. Even you know the, the treatment by... Dominguez to castle long, okay, it's a little bit too much. But on the other hand, it's playable. White may really castle into it in this uh, opening, giving an interesting uh, shape, but uh, my opponent played in the most uh, conservative way. And now White says, like, look, not only I have a knight on d5, I also opened the position. Here he has given an interesting, very interesting theoretical choice, because the normal line should be which he previously played against grandmaster kostic rook takes a4 after which a5 is the is the move once again okay this is really embarrassing and uh, this is i don't want to even analyze about this this is real catastrophe and once white pushes b5 black may start a sacrificial game for instance, this one, you know, is not simple at all for white. As you see, now another aspect of the game started to have its talk, you know, and this is uh, the development. And also by giving the pawn on d5, uh, we also get rid of the uh, weakness, the pawn on d6. And all these things are relative, but I can tell you that the main theory shapes first the bishop should be sent to h6 and then only then the b5 move should be picked up and uh, obviously black tends to play king h8 and looking for f5 and the pawn on h4 makes uh, white's castle tempor temporarily impossible very sharp game uh, I would say like uh, these positions are not really defined yet. But Sredevich, he's a good theoretician, he's very well booked up. Uh, he went for queen takes a4, bishop b7. Here around I think he missed the point, although what he played is not a mistake, bishop c4. And comes very strong with queen c8. Not only it hits the bishop on c4, but also aims... A claim on important diagonal h3 c8 if queen g4 comes then certain things will be very wrong for white and now you will see it's uh, with many openings you know uh, masters grandmasters uh, they are not only afraid of you know losing the game but also they are afraid of uh, 
positions in which they may not win the game. Here we got a really interesting start of this game, an interesting theoretical issue in uh, Chelyabin's Sicilian. If my opponent would have chosen queen b3, which I have seen during the game, and I, I mean, I had some aversive memories in my childhood when I was analyzing positions like that. I decided to give up on this opening. Well, is it correct? Well, I don't know. It's a choice. But as you have seen, this is one of the positions when black has zero chances to win the game. Black is a pawn up. White's pawn structure is compromised, has double pawns. F2 and F3. Still, it's an equality because when we stick to the pawn, it kills all the activity. So, that was uh, really the reason why I didn't, touch, uh, I didn't touch this opening for 30, 30, 35 years. But, uh, okay, it's a paranoia. <laughs> you know, sometimes the players uh, also, like in any other job, uh, they are very much afraid of uh, things which do not exist. So, here, after a long thought, my opponent has chosen Bishop Peter, and the game almost ended up before it started. So this is an advantage of this kind of highly theoretical openings. That uh, when we see this position with bishop d5, e d5. All right, so he occupied the, the place by the pawn. Now is better pawn structure for black. And one more mistake. I have chosen queen b7 over rook b6, which is another idea. And he made a crucial mistake. He had to give the d5 pawn. And black has a pleasant position, but uh, probably some chances to hold the game. And when he did this, and comes that. Now, this is some incredible difference in between two positions we talk. Here, also white is a pawn down. Maybe a better pawn structure nominatively compared to the other one. But on the other hand, black's bishop is very strong so eventually black will make this maneuver and bring the bishop into the game and uh, this position is completely gone and when we go back to compare things this is a draw that's a peculiar thing about this opening and uh, one mistake or another, you know, this also made it, uh, the opening still very valid these days. So, after a couple of moves, you will see that uh, it's really a very bad position for white. And uh, even the presence of opposite colored bishops doesn't keep white in the game. So, once again, back to the history, back to the basics of this game. In such positions, small things, you know, uh, makes crucial differences. This is what Capablanca was uh, calling petit combinaison. So, black plays bishop c5, improves the position of uh, his bishop because... Okay, here this is the end, so white cannot uh, afford of picking up the pawn. And once again... By simple tactics, improves his position, makes a passer, and even another good move, finds the opportunity to push it one more square. Once again, this is very amateurish, it wouldn't happen, but then the pass pawn is uh, secured on e3. So now black has to bring the king into the game. And especially the bishop on c4 is not stable, has a very big job of uh, protecting the pawn on b3. Now it's the technique. So, first of all, uh, we have to have some uh, tactical alertness. 
immediate A4 doesn't work because of this nasty intermezzo. So in order to pre prevent it, we have to evacuate G7 or the seventh rank by our king. So king should step somewhere, not on the seventh rank. We cannot stay. So black prepared this, and this time white wants to take rook c d2. Okay, but uh, position really is cooked for another petty combinaison. Black has taken rook c c4, which crushes the structure because okay, this is almost a checkmate into is a checkmate into not maybe immediately but the most important thing here probably the simplest move is this one you see that now black protects everything has already two passes and a third one is in the way so he will play king takes d5 uh, which would uh, more or less uh, force the resignation in some moves so Sredojevic played his last cause, you know, he played the rook cd2, but after rook e4 he realized that uh, now the problem is, is a good move, it protects the pawn, so this is completely gone as a rook ending, also d5 will fall. But this one also with two pawns up, he resigned. So to, to wrap the things up, it's an opening I recommend. But in general, it's a pawn structure that I recommend for both colors. Everybody should play e4 because this is best by the test. And also, this is a very good uh, response to e4 because uh, when you have such a pawn structure, if you know enough theory and if you handle these positions, in some way, the weakness of d5 is very iffy. In both lines, either with c3 or with this one, which exposes d4. And the king side weakness is compensated after f5 by the piece play. Which is always interesting, you know, to see Tarash's, Dr. Tarash's opinions. Because this is the guy who started to reshape Steinsian theories and said, like, dynamic uh, pawn structures, we should prefer and uh, I wish you games with good structures that's all for today's lecture